Hey folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. Uh, so it's uh, February 10th, still winter and cold out, and it's a good day to get down here in the barn after work and work on our wax cappings. So uh, I've already got them going here. I started out with my GoPro. It didn't work outright, so uh, I'm not going to use the GoPro anymore. Those, It's basically garbage, uh, so don't ever buy one. Just take my word for it. They're terrible. But uh, I've got it going here, and I'm going to show you how I've, how I've got it in there, and a little bit about what's going on, and the little and the setup that we've got going here. Okay, I had a couple of wax capping tanks here. Uh, this one didn't have much in it, and uh, this is from uh, when I went up and helped my father-in-law out, and uh, it's got a little bit of honey in there, so I'll give that back to the bees. And uh, this one has about the same amount of honey underneath it, but quite a few cappings left in there. Uh, my honey harvest was about half what it was last year, so I have about half the cappings. So uh, I'm thinking once uh, this here melts down, I'll be able to get the other in there and we can, we can do uh, one big brick. So uh, this is just a, uh, a roaster oven that I use just for doing this. So you... I don't cook turkeys in it anymore. I keep the temperature there between 150 and 200. Uh, so the wax melts at, I think 160 is the melting point for wax. So this is a long uh, drawn out process. You don't, don't want to rush it, don't want to crank your heat up. Uh, Cause I think you could actually scorch the wax and turn it a little bit dark and you don't want that. So here's what it looks like big pile of oatmeal there <laughs> so in here we have uh, about an inch of water in the bottom of this before i put put all this in and you can see the water there but uh and when you're after you get this uh, big chunk of wax out don't dump your water out uh, set it out in an area and put something in it uh, so bees won't drown because the bees will Take that water because it's it's got honey in it, and uh, that'll give them a little bit of nutrition this time of year. Uh, it I don't know you may not want to do that depending on your area because it will uh, introduce moisture into the hive. But uh, in the summer months, I definitely when it's warm out, I will definitely save that water because they like it. Uh, when you're when you're in the dearth is a good time as well. Okay, we're just going to put the lid on this and let it cook a few hours and uh, come back and check it out. So, uh, yeah, like I was saying, uh, this, is, this takes quite a while. You don't want to rush it. You don't want to burn your wax. So, uh, the, it's good to, to go nice and slow. So, we'll probably come back uh, a lot later this evening or in the morning and check it out. And I want to try and get the rest of that those cappings into this so once that melts it'll settle way down and uh, i'll probably be able to get this in there pretty easy so we'll we'll be back in a minute okay it's the next day uh so i went ahead and let it uh just cook overnight on that low temperature so let's get in here and see what it looks like okay a little bit of stuff floating there to the top it uh, looks like we might have got a little scorch around the sides. I need to turn it down a little bit. But uh, this is stuff that we will filter out with a little hand strainer that I use. So I just use this little hand strainer and I'll run it through there and get this stuff out. But before I start straining, I want to see if I can get the rest of this wax in here now. Usually, it's not so hard to get all of this off in here, but because I've let it sit all summer and all winter, it's really compacted onto the screen really good. 
I'm going to go find a scraper. Okay. I'm just going to set this down in that hot wax. Oh yeah, that's much better. <laughs> Look how that just came off there where it got hot. Wish I could do the whole thing that way. I can uh, go get a hot air gun and blow on this. Let me get what's left in this container here and then we'll give that a shot. Okay, I've got this hot air gun here. It's a uh, just a Ryobi, and it has adjustable uh, temperature range here. Put it on 500 degrees. Yeah, we're going good now. I cranked it on up to 1100 degrees. Getting a little smoke coming off it, so I'm getting a little too hot. Give it a good shake there to shake any uh, liquid wax off of there while uh, it's still liquid. So we have all of our wax now in here and uh, probably melt a lot of this just by stirring it around from the existing heat that's in there and uh, we will let this sit I turned the heat down a little bit it's just above 150 now because I did notice when I popped the top there was some bubbles around the edge so it was kind of boiling and that's too hot I don't want that uh, so this thing heats from the edges So it's not a you know a good consistent heat all the way through and a lot of this black in here is probably from that which you don't want black in your wax and we'll uh, strain all as much of that out of here as we can so one thing I wanted to point out uh, real quick on the quality of your wax so this is basically virgin wax here. It's just been used to cap a honey cell. Uh, there's no brood comb in here. I do have some other, I do have some other wax that I've gathered throughout the year that has some of this dark stuff. And it's, it's just, it may have a little bit of a brood comb in there. From when I do inspections, I'll save the wax. So I've got several of these. So this is the wax that I will melt down and put into a block. And I use this wax to roll back on my plastic foundation uh, to wax it real well so they draw it out good. Uh, when you buy a wax foundation or, or plastic foundation, it will have, uh, most of it has some wax. You have to look and see, make sure you get the pre-wax kind, but it doesn't have much on there. And if it sits out there for a season and the bees didn't draw it out for whatever reason, uh, the next year they would have collected all that wax off of there and they move it around in the, in the hives. So those frames won't be waxed in your hives. And you need to go and re-wax those because they won't draw it out. They'll draw sideways wonky comb in there. So that's what this is good for. But you want to use your wax cappings from your honey harvest. That's the good stuff. It's going to come out nice and light colored and that's what you want to use for your lip balm and products like that or candles this stuff here will come out a lot darker okay so we're going to get the lid back on this and come back later again 
Okay, it's been about three or four hours since we've been in here, and uh, the wind's been out of the north. It's a lot colder outside than it was earlier, so I didn't go and look and see if the bees had made it to that uh, tub that we put out there. But uh, let's get in here and look at this and see what we got going on. Yeah, it looks like uh, it's melted nicely. Yeah, I don't see any solid wax in here, so there's just a little bit of that. Some people call it slum gum, but uh, shouldn't be a whole lot of that because this was some really pure wax. So I'm going to do some straining with our little strainer and do our first pass and then we'll let it cool and get it out and scrape the bottom. That'll be the next steps. So when you get this in your strainer, you want to wiggle it around quite a bit and uh, get as much as the wax out of there as you can. And uh, I'll even press on it with the spoon, kind of force that wax out of there because there's really quite a bit of wax in that. And there's a lot of dark coming out below it, but uh, that will go to the bottom of the wax and that's what we'll be scraping off when it cools. All right, there's a pretty good blob of that right there. And I just dump it out in a bucket. Well, I'm surprised at how dirty this is. For just cappings. I don't know if that's because I scorched it or if that's just uh, stuff that was in the wax. Some of that I think is coming off of the bottom. Ah! <laughs> well, that was not very good. You got to keep it moving because that wax actually uh, cools off, starts clogging up your uh, holes there so you got to keep it moving around keep the hot part coming out all right we'll not spill it this time so when this thing's hot you pop it on the side of your bucket and get all that out of there if it's not hot it'll stay all clogged up all right so we have like an inch of water below this so you can see we probably have about that much wax so now it's time to uh, just turn it off let it cool and uh, tomorrow Saturday we'll get out here and uh, get this out of here so I will let it cool with the lid on it uh, what I've noticed is if you leave the lid off uh, I think what happens is it cools off faster and it tends to crack and it'll be a more uniform piece of wax if you let it cool gradually and keep that lid on there. Okay, it's been a couple days. Uh, it was really cold yesterday. Wind was uh, howling out of the north and it was uh, in the 30s, so I didn't get down here. But uh, anyway, it's a Super Bowl Sunday. Let's get in here and see what this wax looks like. All right, got us a nice big piece there. Wonder how thick it is. There's a few little black pieces in there. And there's a big crack down there, down the middle, which is normal and it'll do that. You can see that dark water there on the edge. So let's uh, see if we can get it out of there and uh, we'll do some scraping off the bottom because there'll be some junk on the bottom. Okay, brought that uh, the big container that's on that 
cooker I just it just loose right out of there so I brought it out here to give us a little bit more room and see if I can get this thing out of here just kind of push on one end and lift on the other there we go so we got us probably a inch and a quarter thick and you can see all the, the black junk that uh, went to the bottom nice close up of that as you can see that little thin layer of yucky stuff there on the bottom so we'll scrape this off and uh, I'm going to save this water because there's a lot of honey in this and bees will take it back to the hive Okay, for this part, I just use a pocket knife and I just scrape it off of there. You can see when you get down to the wax, it comes off pretty easy. A little thicker right in here. Just want to be sure we get down to the wax. There it is. It's kind of bowed up. It's not quite flat. Probably has to do with the cooling process. Okay, the idea behind this, so this is our first scrape. And it's, the idea behind it is to get the biggest junk off of it and you can see it all laying right here a bunch of nasty mucky stuff a little bit of wax in there we got but that's okay but uh you want to get as much of that off as you can and then we'll do a second run okay i rinsed all this out out rinsed it off out there in the hose and got it nice and clean give you a quick look at what it looks like after it's been rinsed off looks pretty good Let's measure it here. So, looks like right at one inch. So again, put a little bit of water in your roaster oven. Probably about an inch and a half in there. And we'll drop this in. And we'll kick her on. I'm going to try it on 150 this time. Uh, seemed like I got a little bit of scorching on the sides. It is receded now off the sides, but once it starts melting, it'll, it'll move on out. So uh, looks like it's uh, color wise, it's just a little bit darker than this piece I have right here, but it's not been filtered yet either. Okay. We'll see you after the Super Bowl. <laughs> Okay, it's the next day, February 14th, Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day. And uh, for those of you that might be wondering, this may or may not be the same shirt and pants I had on yesterday. <laughs> so let's get in here and uh, give this one more hand strain. And then we'll let it cool and we'll go from there. So we shouldn't get a lot this time, which we're not. All right, so we're gonna let it cool this one last time and then we'll get set up with uh, our other heated container and get the filter part set up so you can see how that goes. And uh, that'll be the next step. So we'll go from there. Okay, time for scrape number two. Now, you don't really have to do this step, but it does help. Uh, we'll get, get it out of here and look at it, but uh, if it's, if it's pretty clean, you may not have to scrape it, but it's it's gonna be that much less material that you don't have in your filter that slows down your wax flow as you're filtering it. So let's get it out here and see what it looks like. There we go. 
Yeah, so see how much lighter it is this time compared to last. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and scrape this off. Okay, so there's still, you know, a little bit in here, but this is underneath the wax. So I went and rinsed it off with water. But I got the bulk of it out of there. I could scrape this off and get down there and get all that out, but I'll lose a lot of wax. So our filter is going to get this out. So we got one more melt and then we'll go to the filter. Okay, so we got our pan all rinsed out and clean. And in goes the wax. So this melt will be done without the layer of water. This is just going to be pure wax in here. And we will just pour it out of this over into this uh, crock pot. And the crock pot will be turned on and warm through this strainer. And I'll keep a paper towel over this strainer. And the paper towel is our super fine filter that gets any of that out. So if you got a lot of junk in your wax, it'll plug up this paper towel. So. So we'll kick it on to just under 150 again. That seemed to, to do the trick. And uh, we will filter this out next. Probably that'll happen tomorrow. We got weather coming in tonight. The wind's supposed to hit out of the north and have 60 miles an hour gusts and uh, have rain followed by snow. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Okay. Man, I don't know how many days I've been doing this. Seems like day... 35 or something like that. Uh, it's been going on quite a while. We had some really cold nasty weather come through and I just really didn't feel like coming down here and working getting out here in the cold but uh and I had to binge, binge watch Ozark. Uh, man that's that's quite an intense show if you've never seen that. Uh, anyway let's get in here and uh got our wax melted. I'll show you that. So the melted I think this is what the third fourth melt and we're going to filter it here. So got the crock pot set up. This is a small crock pot. It's not a big one. Got our strainer set up here with the paper towel. And this paper towel is going to be our fine filter. And our wax is nice and melted there. I turned it down pretty low, down below that 150 mark. I had it down around here. Uh, just, I didn't want to take the chance of scorching that wax and making it turn dark because uh, it's been sitting here two days i think melted like that maybe three but uh let's get this uh, going and filtered out so when you do this you want to get yourself in a comfortable position because you're going to be holding this thing for quite a while and we might even have to pull paper towel out and do another one depending on if it gets clogged up or not I don't think we'll have to do that. And I put these paper towels on here to kind of hold on to it uh, because it is a little bit warm. So the trick is uh, to not slosh it. Don't get too much, uh, don't overflow your paper towel here. See what I mean about getting comfortable? You can't just dump it all in there at once. It's kind of a, a slow process and it's got to stay hot. So if it starts cooling off in there, it's going to not want to flow. I'm right at the top of my paper towel there on my right hand side, your left. So I don't want to go any deeper than that. Let's say we got about half of it through there. And it's slowing down too, and that that's probably because the paper towel is, as a filter, it's getting full of that dark stuff. 
there's quite a bit in the bottom here this bottom part down in here it's kind of hanging out on the bottom there see all that dark stuff there so there I wiped all that out just to kind of clean this out so it's starting to solidify there at the top so what I'm going to do is I'll try to pull it up together and then I'll kind of squeeze it through actually it's not going through because the wax is up at that high level I didn't think I had that much wax I guess I do So this strainer is really not filtering any. It's just acting as, as a way to hold it, you know, and, and let the wax still flow through. So you want to be real careful when you do this here without the strainer. Because if you tear this or drop that in there, you're going to contaminate all your wax you're going to have to start over. <laughs> okay, we're going to go with that. And I'm going to get the lid on here. There we go. It's full of wax. So you don't want to leave your wax in a crock pot. Even on low, it gets too hot. Uh, so that'll boil water. And I think water boils at 235. I may be wrong, I don't know. Uh, 100 degrees C, whatever that is in Fahrenheit. So yeah, uh, don't leave it in there because it gets too hot. Just use this as a temporary uh, container to keep it hot while you transfer it into your molds. So that's what we're going to do next. Hey, something else. Uh, it's pretty cool. Someone left a comment. I don't remember where it was. One of my videos. It may have been an old wax video, but don't throw this paper towel away. Save this and uh, cut it in two or three or four pieces and you can light that the corners there and this is an excellent fire starter that'll burn for quite a while because it's got all that wax on it so it's just like a natural wick you've got all that wax so don't throw that away okay now we're going to put our wax in our molds and i use uh just a turkey baster and I've got two kinds of molds here. I got this one silicone one here, and that's from Man Lake. And those are really expensive. I got these white ones, they're a lot cheaper. Uh, it's hard to get the wax out of these white ones, but what I found is, uh, and someone gave me the suggestion, and it works good, put them in the freezer uh, to cool them off. And when it's like freezing temperature the bars just fall right out of there and uh i think i even did it without using uh this mold release spray but i'm going to go ahead and spray it anyway now i know this silicon one it's hard to get them out of there without this mold release so uh i might do a test i'll i'll do these with the mold release and these without but uh, i have four brand new ones here looks like i bought some last time i did this because it took me forever. I just had these four. So there's five, uh, five ounce bars in each one. So that's, uh, eight, that's uh, 40, 40 ounces we can do at a time here. So I'm gonna, gonna spray, let's see. I'm gonna spray these six and leave these two undone. But I know this silicon one even when it's cold, yeah, it's hard to get it out of there. And uh, this is a uh, Cami 1080 mold release spray. And uh, I got this from Man Lake online. Uh, you can probably get it other places too. Works good. All right, I'm gonna get the camera zoomed in here so you can watch this go down. This uh, turkey baster will get hot because 
you do get some up in the bubble and it just it just starts getting hot on your hand so at some point you may have to stop it takes a little bit to get calibrated to you know what an ounce is see that's not enough that's like half so you really got to get some up into the ball to make it fill up there we go And then when the wax gets up in the ball, it starts cooling and drying and then it builds up in there. So it's kind of a mess. Then I use my heat gun to melt it and clean it out. And then the baster starts to melt on you. You can see this one here, it's kind of bent. That's, <laughs> that's what I did to get the wax out of it. This one here I'm using now, I think it's it's new. I don't think I've ever used it before. That wax did look like it turned a little dark on me. I'm going to see if I can do this without getting it up into the ball. Just going to take more trips. So what's good about having your wax in these one ounce bars, when you go to make things with your wax, like lip balm, even candles, a lot of the recipes will say so many ounces of wax uh, as part of the recipe. And then you'd be able to double your size batch or quadruple it, whatever you want to do but it helps you for measuring purposes. Another thing is, if you wanna sell your wax, I've seen people sell it uh, on eBay, on Amazon, and the going price is over $1 per bar, per one ounce bar. I've seen it pretty high as, as much as, I think $2. But they usually sell it in like lots of five or ten in a bag, you know. But uh, I don't sell any of my wax. Not online anyway. I've sold it to some local uh, folks around here who are making lip balm. Folks that bought honey from me asked if I had wax. And I said, yeah, I've got some. And, you know, they didn't buy much. But... Uh, also, if I don't have enough of the old, dirtier type wax uh, that had the, uh, from the brood, brood comb that I will melt, I put that back onto my plastic frames or plastic foundation. I give it a good coating and the bees will draw it out correctly that way. A lot of people say wax or a plastic foundation is no good. Because bees won't draw it out right. Well, it's got to have wax on it. If it don't have wax on it, it's not going to work. And you can you buy it. A lot of times it does have wax on it. Like the right cell from Man Lake does have wax on it. But if it gets old and if it's if it's was in the hive and the bees didn't draw it out, they'll uh, take the wax off of it and move it somewhere else. And then they won't draw that frame out correctly so you got to go in and uh, I use this baster I melted in there and I use a paint roller and roll it right onto that plastic and it works good and another thing you can do if you don't have your wax ready and melted you can just take one of these bars that's I don't have one here but and just rub it on that plastic and just like a crayon, it'll coat it. It's not as good, I don't think, as 
as rolling the, the melted wax on there, but it gives it a wax coating. And that will actually work if you're out in the field and you got one you need to do. Always carry some wax in your pocket in your in your bee jacket. If you find a frame like that that needs wax, you can take care of it right there. You don't have to pull it out, put another one in, go through all that. So it's good to carry wax with you. Whoa, getting kind of messy. It's a messy job. I believe I like doing this with uh, not sucking up and doing one bar per squeeze. It doesn't, your wax doesn't get cold up in this ball. And it seems to be working much better. So have some patience. <laughs> so it's about one and a about two thirds of a of a uh, bar is what this thing will do. So there's a third. Boop. Okay. So you don't want to move these either, like to take them to the freezer. You want to let the top solidify because you can't get it over there into your freezer and set it down level and move it around without spilling it. And when this gets on your floor, it don't come off, not without heat. And it'll soak into the concrete. But out here in this shop, I really don't care, but it is messy stuff. <laughs> okay, looks like we got about uh, two thirds of our crock pot done here. And my hand is not burning like normal because I'm not letting the wax get up into this ball. That is the hot ticket there. Uh, it's not the hot ticket, it's the cool ticket. <laughs> All right. Ah, just a little bit more. Yeah, so I don't have to clean this out now. It's going to solidify in here, but it's going to be really thin. And next time I do this, it's so thin that the hot wax will melt, melt it. And it's not going to be a problem. Okay, so remember, if you're using a crock pot, uh, don't leave it in there for an extended amount of time. That's, I, I'm pretty sure it gets too hot because wax will melt. I think it's at 160 and these get way hotter than that. You know, these get hot enough to, to cook meat, so it's well over 200 degrees and they'll boil water. So, all right, we're going to let this uh, finish setting up and uh, I got the freezer started over here and uh, we'll get them put into there. Okay, these just come out of the freezer. They've been in there probably an hour and a half. And I put a black dot on the ones that did not have the mold release. So here's one right here. And the other one is right here. So let's do the mold released ones that I sprayed first. Pretty easy. So this wax did turn out a little darker. This is last year's and that's this year's. So it is a little darker. I think I uh, got a little bit hot on that very first melt and that may be why. And the silicon mold. Okay, now for the big test. So these weren't sprayed, and they're that hard plastic. They feel pretty loose. 
Well, I think they came out easier than that. <laughs> Pretty darn easy. Yeah, no need to spray these. So save yourself some money buying that uh, mold release because you don't need it. So I won't use that next time. So there's 40 ounces. It's like dominoes. <laughs> so that's it. I'm not going to uh, video the, doing the rest of that, but I'm going to go ahead and do it now and uh, get it uh, in the freezer. So uh, that's how you render your beeswax into one ounce bars ready for use for lip balm or whatever. So, uh, hey, give me a thumbs up. Share the video. That helps. And uh, check out my Amazon links if there's anything down there you like. A lot of beekeeping stuff down there. A lot of video equipment. And uh, subscribe on your way out. We'll uh, catch you on the next beekeeping video. Y'all take care.